In every single organization, you're going to find a combination of good sales professionals and not so good sales professionals. So what I want to share with you right now is, you know, what are those qualities that actually make a good sales professional? What are the traits of a world-class sales professional? So these are the traits that will separate the top performers from the bottom performers. So let's jump right in. The first thing you need to succeed in sales, one of the best traits to have, is to be a good listener. Sales is not about talking. It's about listening. You know, there's an expression that says you were born with two ears and only one mouth so that you could listen twice as much as you talk. <laughs> so that's great advice. We need to be really good listeners. But what do bad salespeople do instead? What they do is instead of listening, they're talking over the customer. They're barking orders, they're talking about their features and benefits, and they're just describing their products so much, and they think they're doing a good job, but the problem is they're not listening to a word the customer's saying. I can remember even walking into stores and saying, hey, I'm looking for a TV. And the salesperson doesn't even seem to listen at all and says, you know what, we've got a good promotion on dishwashers. I'm not looking for a dishwasher, bro. I'm looking for a TV. Aren't you listening? So be sure that you're listening and not talking over the customer. Next, one of the traits of a really good sales professional is asking good questions. I tell this to sales teams all the time. If you want to get better at sales, get better at asking questions. Be curious. Try to find out more about the customer. What are their pain points? What are their goals, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations? What are they hoping to achieve? What are they hoping to avoid? What are their goals and desired outcomes? You've got to be curious and ask a lot of questions. But what do bad salespeople do instead? They assume everything. They assume they have all the answers. They've heard this before. They've seen this type of customer before. So they don't even bother asking you any questions. They just assume that they know who you are and what you need and they start offering solutions right away. That is a huge mistake because those salespeople miss out on the subtleties and the nuances of what's really important to customers and they will likely lose a sale. So ask better questions. Be curious. Another trait of really good salespeople is confidence. You have got to be confident, you guys. What does confidence mean? I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm not talking about being a know-it-all and braggadocious. I'm talking about having a quiet, sometimes not so quiet, <laughs> that's okay, but having a quiet confidence. What is confidence? It's a belief in yourself. It's a belief in your abilities. It's a belief in your company. It's a belief in your product and service. It's a belief that you're actually helping customers. Do you believe it? If you believe it, you've got confidence. So here's the thing. I often meet some salespeople that are really timid and they're passive and they just sit around and they wait quietly and if a customer approaches them, God forbid, then they might <laughs> actually try to engage in some selling, some sort of a selling conversation. But the thing is, you guys, you need to have confidence in yourself and your product and your, your company. A belief in yourself. And confidence comes from competence. When you're good at something, when you've got the knowledge, skills, and abilities to sell and to perform, when you've got that strong product knowledge, when you're competent as a salesperson, guess what? Your confidence level skyrockets. And that confidence is what it's going to take to help you get through those tough patches, to brush off those failures and just keep on moving. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Great salespeople are also super friendly. I've never met a salesperson who was successful that wasn't friendly. You've got to have some people skills. You've got to have those soft skills to be able to really get along with people. You know, there's this old expression you've probably heard. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. They got to like you. 
They really have to like you. You've got to be personable. Because I'll tell you something. I've seen a lot of companies out there that even have low prices, great products, but the service, horrible. Staff, rude. Not even unfriendly, rude. I remember one time, <laughs> I was in a mall and I was trying to find a Starbucks, all right? And I went to the customer service counter and I asked the person behind the counter, um, hi, excuse me. And she looked at me and went, yes. Just like that, so rude. Hi there, yes. Whoa, okay. Um, uh, where's the nearest uh, coffee shop? That way. Whoa. Super rude. And that's a person in customer service? Give me a break. I see that in sales all the time too. I see salespeople that seem annoyed when customers approach them. It's like, I'm sorry I'm interrupting you playing your game on your phone. You're here to serve customers. You're here to sell to me. Be friendly and nice. A smile goes a really long way. So be sure that you've got that, my friends. So here's a couple more traits I want to share with you. And this is one of the most important. Great salespeople always follow up. They manage their pipeline. They know where their opportunities are in the funnel. They know what stage each opportunity is at in the pipeline. And they follow up consistently. As opposed to bad salespeople that sit around and simply wait for customers to pick up the phone or to drop them a message. What are you waiting for? So many times I train teams and, 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 and I hear leaders ask their team, what's the status of that opportunity? And they almost always reply like this, uh, pending, it's pending. I say, pending what? Uh, don't know, right? They don't know, it's just pending, which basically is an excuse, it's just this limbo. So instead of waiting passively for customers to follow up with you, we need to follow up with customers super promptly. So use all the technological tools that you have at your disposal. Calendar scheduling, apps, use your phone, use WhatsApp, use LinkedIn, do whatever it takes. Pick up the phone, old school. Stay on top of your opportunities. Use a CRM tool. Put in what's the date of next follow-up and what action do I need to take and by when. Follow-up is the key to succeed in sales. You would hate to lose out on a deal because your competitor was more, um, uh, more effective at following up than you, right? Why would you want to pick up the phone, call six months later, only to find out that you lost the job to the competition? Stay on top of it, manage your pipeline, and follow up. Now, the last trait of all great salespeople and this is probably the most important, is they're relentless. Relentless. They will not relent. They will not stop. They don't take no for an answer. In sales, no doesn't mean no. It means not yet. It means not now. It means the customer is not sure, not ready, not convinced, not at this time. But no is never, never. <laughs> okay? No is temporary. They're relentless. They're like a dog with a bone and they won't let go. Now, I'm not talking about being obnoxious or, or pesky. I'm talking about being persistent. So there's being a pest and there's being persistent. You want to be persistent, to persevere and to be relentless. Unstoppable, unshakable. You have dreams, you have goals. Don't let anybody detract you from those goals. And one of my favorite quotes from Mark Cuban is, Every no brings me closer to a yes. So you've got to believe that. And it circles right back to one of the first tips I shared with you about being confident. You've got to have that self-belief and that relentlessness to never give up. Now get out there and do what you got to do. Take care, guys.